So yes, I have the My NT 3D printing pen. I don't know if that's the way you pronounce it or not. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. My NT 3D printing pen. And yes, I got the, the professional version. Don't have the Bulbasaur on the back. I got some kind of T-Rex. and I, Is that supposed to be the thing from the Fantastic Four? I don't know. But anyway, you've probably seen other videos. It's the pen. You plug it into a USB cord. It's got the nice LED. It'll do temperatures. I'll have to read the specs, but I think it goes up to 230 degrees Celsius. Pretty much any filaments that will handle, that will melt within, by the time you hit 230 degrees Celsius, will work in here. I have never used. I have never even opened this yet. Um. Now, I'm not getting this or planning to use this to create nice little monstrous looking whatever those are. I'm thinking like uh, if I have a 3D part for whatever reason maybe a corner lifted but they just don't let's see if I can make it do they just don't quite fit together but it printed out I want to use it to fill in that gap and then I can sand it make it look nice So that is what we're going to find out if we can or can't. Also, I got this other piece. It's dusty. But I'll see if I can do something like that. Maybe. Who knows? That's the main reason I bought it. Is to make my 3D printed parts. Well, you've already seen my 3D printers. You can look back at them. So it comes with red blue yellow ABS I don't print ABS I print PLA and while I'm thinking about it I have this nice roll of white so you can see it and it comes with if you have issues don't return it call them they'll help you fix it Apparently they'll send you a coffee maker. I don't know. Um, not like some of them that aren't going to read anything. I've already watched a few YouTube videos. I kind of got the gist of how it works. The instructions are pretty straightforward. The nozzle is replaceable. Um, but it doesn't show you how. It doesn't even show you how to take the thing apart. But from the videos I've seen, and it comes with the tool to take it apart, um, yeah, you can pop it off right here, I don't know if you, yeah, you can see it, and then this part pops off, and then there's a screw in here, I guess it's on this side, and then this black, the whole black tip comes off as a unit with the nozzle, and I think part of the, the Teflon, or the tube, I would call it a Bowden tube, comes with it, and then you get a new one to put that on. This is where you set the temps. This is where you set the speeds, and then this is when you tell it to go forward, or if you need to retract. That's about the gist of what I know. So we're going to find out. I'm going to use theirs that comes with it. Their cord, which I hear is really short. Yes, yeah, so here's the tools. Here's the plastic thing for opening the cover. That plastic thing is not to clean the nozzle. It's not made for that. And then the screwdriver is to unscrew the, the Phillips screw on the nozzle. Yeah, you don't use this plastic thing to clean this nozzle. It's not meant for that. Uh, what else I saw? Oh yeah, it's a .6 nozzle. Not a .4, which I didn't really print with. I do have a .8. I use that when I do very large prints on my Chiron don't normally do that big of a print oh no, this cord don't seem too short I'd say it's about three foot ish so let's plug it all in light up the monitors just because they're on that same outlet and there's two holes and like always 
put it in the right hole. And we get a nice little screen. Hopefully that shows up. The camera hates me. It never focuses on LEDs or anything. I don't know why that is. It just will not focus. Until now. So target temp is 210 ABS. They say 195 or 175. I'm sorry. For PLA. On my 3D printer, I print at 207. So we're going to do what they say. We're on PLA um, 175. There we go. We're going to try it the way they say. And I guess you're supposed to push on these buttons to start it. There we go. So we're at 57 and climbing. It's going pretty quick. I'm assuming it just goes to 175 and stops. If we get anything different, I'll show you. And then we'll get the PLA. I'm gonna... I'm actually gonna cut a piece off. Just for this. I don't need to mess with the whole reel. Let me clip this off. Actually, now that I say that, I already have some black over here. We'll just use that. And this is just PLA. My chair is stuck on my camera. Just PLA from ZYL Tech. Pretty much all I use now. And we're already at 175. So, an end. Pretty much just cut. Shove it in that hole. And it stops right there. Get the box out of the way. Put these over here. And I have it in the middle for speed. I'm assuming this is slower and this is faster. We'll put it in the middle. Ooh, can you hear that? I'm not sure if it's drawing it in or not. Oh yeah, it is. In the videos, I didn't hear that. You can see it pulling that in. Nothing's coming out yet, though. Oop. Now we're getting some white. Apparently it's hot enough. Oop, there's some black. And that actually seems to get it. Now I'm going to assume that that white is, uh, ABS. And that stinks. Phew. I've never printed ABS before. But uh, I'm going to set this down for a moment. Let it stay warm. Take a look at what we printed out. And I just did some zigzags. And, I don't know. Seems to have printed okay. Let's see if we can get it to actually stick though. Sounds like it also has a little retract as soon as you let go. Let's do the other side. There's that little piece of ABS. Hold it flat. Also, if you double tap that button, it'll just run continuous. Let it cool. I don't know if you can see that very well. It looks like trash. Obviously, I don't know a clue what I'm doing. But even on that dusty, filthy PLA base, the black part, 
it's stuck pretty good. Let me set this down again. Oh, I hear cracking. See, yeah, I'm, I'm cranking on that pretty good. It did break loose. I mean, obviously, it's not hot enough to, to melt the other PLA that I did at 207. Mm, well, well, that's stuck in there pretty good. That will not come off. Okay. What about welding two pieces together? Of course, those are flat. Um, a little further than that. Uh, I was trying to get a bigger gap. Not that big of one. Okay. So as you can see, holding them together, there's a little bit of a, a gap there. Well, you can't see it. Further. You see that? No, you cannot see that gap. Let's try it in this direction. Oh, there you did. You can see that gap. So that's what I'm talking about. If I go to 3D print, you know, and something breaks, or it's a complicated piece and I have to print it in two pieces, or if it's just really big, this is what I want it for. Got a little nubbin on the end. Do that. And while that's cooling, I'm going to double tap this. Oh, yeah, that does work. Now it's going way too fast. Apparently I need to move my hand quicker. And I can adjust the thickness of it. You'll see real thick there at the top, then real thin. I can make it real thick. I'll move out of the way so you can see that in a second. Should be cool. Okay. So this is where I started, it was real thick, and then I went faster, and then this is where I welded it together. Oh, I'm going to move the camera up again. And there's still a gap on the back that I did not fill. Yeah, you can see that. So it's just the front piece that I did, or the front side. And obviously I would sand that, make it look pretty and then I'd probably paint it. Hmm. And that's just doing the one side and that's that's pretty strong. If it's a part where you have the ability to get into where you can do both sides. Again, this is the first time I took it out of the box. I'm sure with a little bit of practice, you could do that a whole lot nicer. Now I've done both sides. It's, it's sticking in there pretty good. Oh, and you can still see the gap here. Hopefully. The camera would focus there. You can kind of see it. So I did both sides of it. And that's... Pretty solid. I mean, it's not going to be anywhere near as solid as, you know, four millimeters layer on top of layer on top of layer by a 3D printer. But just putting them together, and I would obviously have super glue in the middle as well. So the super glue would hold it. This would fill in the gap, throw it on the floor, and then sand this down. You can make some really nice nice edges I'm thinking or you know fill in your gaps now that I have a little bit better of an idea of what I'm doing let's try and weld it to this a little better go a little slower this time
and it does a little retract at the end. Kind of like that. Do both sides. And then I'm actually going to retract it. I'm not pulling it. I'm just making sure it's coming out. Oh, and it just let go. So that's what it looks like coming out. Ooh, there's still a string in there. And then I'm going to let it sit. I wanted to uh, see on the self cooling. What are we at? We're at 16 minutes and 15 seconds. See how long it takes to shut itself down. So this is the first side that I, I just did. I went a lot slower. And then I did the back side as well. Hopefully you can see this. Oh yeah, you can see that. Well, I'm tweaking on that pretty good. I can see on the back side where it's bending it. But, uh, I'm just holding on to that piece I just I'm just gonna call it welding you call it what you want I'm gonna call it welding the piece I just welded on there um yeah it'll do what I want and then like I said if you put two pieces together obviously you'd super glue in the middle first or I will be because I actually want some bit of strength to it I'll be using this to fill in the gaps if I have any sand it smooth and then ready to paint this is still on I'll move it over here so you guys can see it you still can't see it kind of see oh it was in focus my camera hates me Focus is for a second. <clears throat> anyway, okay, oh, you can see it just shut off actually. So that was at 116.15, so about not quite three minutes, or right about three minutes. I might have been delayed. So it is cooling off now, it's basically off. Um, it's off, but it is not cool. That is still warm. <laughs> don't put it in your mouth it's hot and well, let's just unplug it so uh, well, that kind of developed some static cling to my table that was cool for what I wanted for the little my NT 3d pro printing pen I mean, out of the box, the little bit of test you saw me do, as long as it does this, I'm good with it. That That's pretty damn good. Don't want ABS. And if this white stuff was in there, was ABS, I've never actually used ABS. And now I never will. That stinks. That was horrendous. It sounds like my 3D printer just finished its job. It did all those tracks all these silly things that you're looking way too low to miss all my uh, tracks for my track vehicle I'm doing got a nice little stack here I'll show you this whole pile it's one two three four five six seven eight nine nine layers I think they're about 12 deep. And you can see over here, we got a nice little pile of more. And rock the chair back. This printer just finished some. And my CRX just finished some. Lots of tracks.
have to unlock my chair again. <laughs> but yeah, I think the my NT3D Pro printing pin. Um, actually, let's pop that apart real quick. A little flat screwdriver. Oh, that's a Phillips. That's a flat. Let's just take a look. Because in the other ones I saw, it has two little gears in there. So I'm pretty sure you could do flexibles with this. Oh, and you gotta pop these. Oh man. I hate doing this just to do it. Because I have no business to being in there. saw one guy who like just took the whole thing apart don't even know why yeah he took like these screws apart and oh my <laughs> all right so here's that screw I was talking about take that little Phillips screw out and this whole black end piece just comes out and then there's a white Bowden tube that goes up into this tube and that's what you replace this clear tube, you might not be able to see, oh yeah, you see it, is just to, to direct it in, and it is only one gear. This one's just a smooth roller. It's one gear, and the smooth roller pushes it into this tube, into the Bowden tube. This yellowish, or yellowish, this white clear kind of is the Bowden tube. And that's what goes in here. So when you replace it, you got to push it through the metal tube and into this little fitting or housing then all the way down you can see the speed oh it moves a slider switch right here is what that speed roller does and then this button and that button two buttons there on the board and then obviously the LEDs on the other side power wires from the plug down to the board I am not taking it apart any more than this it's just to make sure you can change out the head and that tube. Mine works. I'm going to keep it that way. Now if I can figure out how to put this back in without breaking everything. It should just snap in just like that. Cool. It says it's DC 5 volts, 2 amps. Oh, that was the other thing. That was the other thing. There's a big ass battery pack. Keep it zoom you out. There we go. 10,000 milliamp. 5 volt, 2 amp. We're going to see if it'll run this. Now that I took all the filament out, darn it. Hmm. Definitely. Oh, powers it up. Focus. Oh, there we go. Hey, it actually remembers the last temp that I used, too. That's cool. I probably will never change it. Actually, I'm going to change it. Let's go to 180. Just to see what the filament looks like. Um, some other videos I saw, it looks like it's all burnt and turning brown. and Yeah. We don't want that. Oh, it went off. Why'd it go off? Oh no, did my battery die? Hmm. I thought this had a push button, it told me, but...
Okay. Hey, Dad. Switch sides on the battery. Still plugged into the battery, though. Okay. Let's see. Oh yeah. And then battery's got all four bars. We're heating up. We're up to 111 out of 180. Focus. I hate my camera. I don't know why it doesn't like me. And then other days it'll focus like instantly. There we go. We're already up to one, or yeah, 180. It heats up quick. So I'll stick this tube in, or filament in here. And it's pulling that in. It's running just fine off that battery, by the way. If you need it to go portable out in the field for some reason, RC cars probably ain't strong enough for that. But if you're doing like rocketry and you need it to uh, set it up for your rocket, I don't see why that would be any problem. Make sure it's still feeding. Oop, now it's using. And just so you know, 180 might be a bit too much. Let's try that again. Oops. This is a little bit I just did. And I made another layer on top of this. Um, I actually weld it down into it. I don't know if you can see my hot spot. I think for this particular filament, 180 is the, the right spot. Yeah. Try something here on the edge. I can hear that motor dying down. I don't think it's my battery is quite enough for this. I haven't charged that battery in a couple days, so. All right. Let's retract that filament before my battery dies. So yeah, if you need it to use a battery pack, it definitely can and will function perfectly fine. Oh, that must be it. Yep. I'll let that sit up here out of the way and cool. I actually want to look at the bottom of this. Oh yeah, you can see where it heated through the, the plastic. There, there it is. And you can see there, that's 180, if it'll focus, and this, 175. I think the 180, for my particular filament, is the way to go. Yeah, and that is not going to let go. Holy cow, I'm actually ripping the black piece. Oop, yeah. Just that. <laughs> the black piece broke before that weld did. It wasn't very thick though. This is only one millimeter. Should be able to see that. There we go. But I'm impressed. It does what I want. I'm happy. That is freaking perfect. Let's go ahead and unplug that from that battery pack though. Let it cool off completely. 
that's the end of my, uh, I don't know if I'd call it a review, the end of my opinion of this my NT 3D professional printing pen. As long as it can do this, um, I think it's got a, uh, I can't remember, it's at least a one year warranty, it might have been three, but I think it's a one year warranty, it's off Amazon, so it should have at least that. Um, nope, one year warranty. Oh, focus. Yeah. Limited. But as long as it does what it's supposed to for a year, I can't complain. I think it was $59.99 at the time of this filming, videoing. I think with tax it was like $64, 63 and some change. Um, you're definitely going to be seeing more of it. I have a very, very large print I actually just finished. I'll be posting those up here in the next week or two. And, you know, sometimes when your bed's not quite level or for whatever reason and you had to use tape, that's why I want this to fill in those little gaps. Then I can sand it down. Nobody besides me is going to know the difference. Once you paint it, yeah. And I think that's what a lot of the 3D printers out there are already doing, printers. I think they're, they're using like epoxy and stuff instead. Oh hey, I could glue that back together just like that. But anyway, I think they're using epoxy or some kind of Bondo or that goop. I'm not going to be using goop. That stuff just, no. This, however, and then if I need to, I can, you know, jump gaps, build it. I mean, it's just like a welding, like a MIG welder or a TIG welder. Actually, I'd call it a TIG welder. Just like a TIG welder for 3D printed material. Fabulous. And just like always, nope, nobody paid me squat to do this. I bought this on my own, bought it off Amazon. I liked what I saw, tested it at this point so far. What are we? 32 minutes out of the box. I like it. Oh, I did not look at the charging block. It is a very generic, no label. Oh, wait, nope, label's down here says it's UL listed, but who knows? Um, if I can get it to focus. There we go. So it's 5 amp, 2 amps, 10 watts. 5 volts. And part numbers and all that if you want and or need. Serial number, model number. Raise my camera, let me focus in on that. That's all I got. Thanks.